I think everyone knows about the beauty of Joseon sunscreen. If you don't, it is super popular right now because it's so light and comfortable while still being protective and really budget friendly. But Beauty of Joseon has so many other fantastic budget friendly skincare products, some of which are really underrated. I'm going to tell you about some of the best ones today. I'm Michelle of Lab Muffin Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD, Cosmetic Chemist, and most importantly, skincare connoisseur. Let's get into it. This video is sponsored by Style Korean, who stock K beauty products from tons of different brands, including Beauty of Choson. I'm going to start with possibly the second most hyped up Beauty of Choson product, although I still think it's less popular than it should be. It is the Revive Eye Serum Ginseng and Retinol. This is an eye product, but a lot of people actually just use it all over their face. The main draw card here for most people is the Retinol, which is considered the strongest form of vitamin A that you get in cosmetic skincare products. It's only one conversion away from retinoic acid, so it's one step closer than retinol. Korean products tend not to use a lot of vitamin A, but it is starting to increase. I think this is still the only Korean product I've seen that has retinol. It is one of the, if not the, most budget-friendly retinol products available. This has 0.02% retinol encapsulated in liposomes, which makes it a really gentle product. Basically, the retinol is inside these little packets and it gets released more slowly onto skin. The liposomes also help keep it stable and there are also soothing ingredients in this. There's niacinamide, ginseng, vitamin E, and adenosine. All of these help reduce a bit of that irritation, and the ginseng is also meant to have some anti-wrinkle benefits. This is one of the gentler retinol slash retinol products I've tried, but I do know that some people have still got an irritation from it. So if you're new to these stronger retinoids, or if you know that your skin finds retinoids a little bit spicy, I would recommend introducing this really slowly. I have a video on how to start on retinoids that have a lot of tips for how to slowly introduce your skin into it, but I have found that I can use the serum every day if I'm just a little bit careful with it and don't use like way too much, which is how you are meant to use retinoids. You only need about a pea-sized amount for your whole face. This is fragrance-free. I know a lot of people whose skin can't handle fragrance often have issues finding K-beauty products, so if that is you, BOJ should be on your radar because most of their products are fragrance-free. And this leads me onto the Radiance Cleansing Balm. I am a huge fan of cleansing balms. I really enjoy them for melting off makeup and sunscreen sort of effortlessly before then using a regular cleanser. I just find it really relaxing to like massage my face while I take my makeup off at the end of the day. It is honestly my favorite step in my skincare routine that I look forward to all day. It's kind of like the face or skincare equivalent of kicking off your shoes. A lot of people have asked me about fragrance-free cleansing balms that have smooth textures that still rinse off nicely and this is one of the very few out there. And unlike a lot of other fragrance-free cleansing products, this actually barely smells like anything. It still has that really lightweight, kind of melty texture that a lot of other Korean cleansing balms have, minus the fragrance. So if your skin is sensitive to fragrance, then this is a really good option that doesn't really compromise on much. The tub also has this really handy flip top lid, which is much nicer than a screw top when your hands are like oily and slippery. It has a spatula if you are into spatulas. I'm not really that into spatulas. I find it really satisfying to just like gouge my finger into the hole of the cleansing balm. I do get a lot of products with spatulas. I've actually got them in this giant collection right here. I don't know if anyone's has noticed this. Anyway, this is a really nice product and I think it is relatively unique. Now on the topic of cleansing, let's move on to the Green Plum Refreshing Cleanser. This is a really lovely inoffensive cleanser. And inoffensive is really what you want from a cleanser. It should clean well without messing up your skin so your skin is nicely prepared for the rest of your skincare routine. It also foams really well, but it doesn't dry out your skin. I would say that this is actually one of the most hydrating cleansers I've used. There was zero tightness on my skin after using this. There are a bunch of antioxidants in it, which can potentially help reduce a bit of that cleansing irritation, and it is slightly acidic to match your skin's natural pH. With a lot of foaming Korean cleansers, you tend to get this really amazing, fluffy, dense foam, but then they have a really high pH, and that tends to help strip your skin and irritate it if your skin is prone to dehydration, which my skin very much is. It does take a little bit more effort to get like a fluffy lather with this compared to those more drying cleanser formulas, but I think it is really worth it. I am a huge fan of hydrating cleansers because it feels like you don't need to use as many hydrating products after cleansing. You don't have to load up your skin again with hydrating toners and serums just to get your skin back to baseline before you go and apply the rest of your skincare. Again, this is a fragrance-free cleanser, so another really good option if your skin doesn't like fragrance. 
I feel like I have already raved about the Relief Sun Rice and Probiotics so many times, but I'm going to quickly run through it in case for those of you who are new to Beauty of Chosen. This is possibly the most raved about sunscreen online at the moment, and it is my favorite sunscreen that I've tried so far. It is a Korean sunscreen that's not approved in other countries as far as I know. It is pretty lightweight, but on the more moisturizing side, which I have personally really appreciated. My skin is sort of oily combination, but it has been drying out a bit because I've been using a lot more retinoids, which are a bit drying, and I've also had some hormonal changes thanks to dealing with endometriosis. The texture is really beautifully smooth and buttery. It's made by one of Korean's top sunscreen manufacturers. There is a tiny bit of white cast when I first apply it, but it goes away once I leave it for about 10 minutes. On the topic of rubbing and white cast, you shouldn't be rubbing your sunscreen in a whole bunch to try to get rid of that white cast. The more you rub, the more it drops the protection of the sunscreen. It can drop it by quite a lot, so just put it on and let it sit. The downside of the sunscreen is that because it is so popular, there's been quite a few fakes floating around like on Amazon. So if you are planning to buy this, I highly recommend buying it from an official retailer like Style Korean. My next pick is the Apricot Blossom Peeling Gel. Is it just me or is everyone sleeping on peeling gels? I feel like I don't really see other skincare creators talk about them, but maybe I just haven't seen them. Let me know in the comments if you're a peeling gel fan or if you know where all the peeling gel fans are hiding. I've been using a peeling gel maybe two or three times a week for more than the last 10 years, maybe the last 15. Peeling gels are one of my top underrated products that I really feel need more love, and this is a really good one. They are basically really gentle physical exfoliants. The reason everyone hates on physical exfoliants is just that a lot of people tend to overuse them. And that is pretty easy to do if they've got really rough particles, things like apricot seed or ground pumice or like salt particles. A lot of people start using scrubs when they start on skincare, they're looking for something to deal with acne, and then they just use those and use them way too hard, and that just irritates the crap out of their skin. That also happened with overusing cleansing brushes, which is another form of physical exfoliation, and all of this has just given physical exfoliants a really bad name. But physical exfoliation isn't all bad, it's actually really fantastic for immediately smoothing the surface of your skin when you use it in moderation. That's the important part, moderation. And if you have a physical exfoliant that's really gentle, you can probably use it in combination with chemical exfoliation without overly stripping your skin. And of course, that will depend on your skin. So that's why peeling gels are great. They have the softest cellulose fibers as their scrubbing particles. These are the same sorts of fibers that you see in wet tissues when they're sort of like falling apart. And so these are super soft fibers that aren't gonna scratch your face no matter how hard you press. When you put one of these on your skin, the oil from your skin starts making the fibers bunch up and turns them into larger soft scrubbing strings. There are some products that say it is dead skin, but it is not. If it was dead skin, it would not be a gentle product. And even though those fibers are really soft, I find that they're really thorough. Peeling gels are just really good at getting dead skin off my skin compared to something that feels a lot harsher like a scrub, a standard scrub that has hard particles. And that's especially in the parts around my nose where it kind of feels like it's hard to get to with a physical exfoliant. This just works really well. Now, if you press too hard, you can still end up irritating your skin because you just have way too much friction, but you have to try a lot harder to overuse a peeling gel and they have made such a difference to my skin. One little use case that I love is when I have dry flakes around my nose, like when I'm blowing my nose a lot, I've had a cold or I've had allergies, and then I put on foundation and the foundation gets caught in the flakes and it makes them look really obvious. If I have a peeling gel and I use it really gently, just buffing it in little circles and rinsing it off before putting on makeup, that stops this from happening and it kind of breaks off the flakes really close to the skin and yeah, exfoliating irritated skin is not really best practice, but it is a lot better than the alternative, which is me trying to pluck off like foundation colored flakes with a pair of tweezers afterwards, which ends up ripping off skin that is still attached and leaving raw exposed skin. It's really gross. And if you are someone who also does this, please do yourself a favor and use a peeling gel instead. This is one of my favorite peeling gels I've tried. My big test of whether a peeling gel is good is whether or not it bunches up and gives enough scrubbing fibers when I use it in the shower when there's lots of extra water around. This one works really, really well, but a lot of them don't and they turn kind of sad and watery. Some of them actually go kind of sticky and stick to all your like little hairs and maybe that's why people don't love peeling gels. They've been using the wrong ones. But yeah, this one passes with flying colors. And again, it is fragrance free and it has minimal smell for a fragrance free product, which again is rare for a peeling gel. 
Now, what is actually best practice for irritated flaking skin is, segue, a hydrating product. This is the Ginseng Essence Water. It's a hydrating toner. This sort of product is really popular in Asian skincare for just adding a layer of lightweight hydration to your skin without adding stuff that sits noticeably on the surface. This doesn't leave any residue on your face, so there's just a lot less chance of this making another product ball up on your skin. So this is perfect for under sunscreen or under makeup. It's also really good as one of the earliest steps in an evening routine. I would apply this right after cleansing before any other actives or serums. This sort of product is also really handy when your skin is super dehydrated and your regular moisturizer isn't quite doing enough. So instead of trying to find a whole new moisturizer, you can just add another hydrating product underneath and together they can hydrate enough. I found this super useful for applying to my skin right after cleansing. It stops my skin from drying out if I wait a bit too long before my other steps. This is super hydrating. It's got a lot of glycerin. It's also got hyaluronic acid and it leaves a kind of plump hydrated feeling on my skin that is just shy of being tacky. And that is such a hard balance to get in a product like that maximum plumpness, but just not sticky. Although I can't guarantee that it will hit that spot for everyone else. It depends on how humid your environment is. It depends on your skin, but it does hit that spot for me. So there is a chance. There's no extra oil in this either. So again, just less stuff on your face. There are a lot of different types of ginseng extract in this, which have lots of antioxidants as well as niacinamide. So this is a really good way of adding niacinamide and antioxidants and ginseng to your routine without adding much weight or stickiness. The lack of oil is also awesome for when you need something in summer to just hydrate and soothe your skin, but you can't handle any extra oil on your face. I use this as my hot weather moisturizing product at night a lot and just skip moisturizer. Again, it is fragrance free and to me, it smells like nothing. Beauty of Joseon have a bunch of serums and out of them, my favorite one that I've tried so far is the Glow Serum, which has propolis and niacinamide. It took me a really long time to get into propolis because I always just assumed it was like the same as bee venom. It just sounded like a really irritating ingredient that was meant to be good for acne and nothing else. And I felt like I already fell into that trap with all those teenage acne products that just burn. So I avoided it for a really long time. But it turns out that propolis is like the opposite of that. It is really non-irritating. After I saw Kelly Driscoll rave about propolis a whole bunch of times, I finally decided to look more into it and try it out. And it turns out that my skin really loves it. And this is actually one of Kelly's top serums, which is why I tried it in the first place. Kelly is really good for K-beauty reviews. I end up loving a lot of the products she recommends. Propolis is really nice and soothing. It's great for breakouts. And I think that's because it is made from plant sap. The bees basically eat it and turn it into concentrated antioxidants. It's also really hydrating and humectant. It has a bit of a sticky texture, but in a lot of products it is diluted enough so it's not really offensively sticky. This isn't sticky, but it does have that tacky hydrating texture. There's also 2% niacinamide and 0.5% salicylic acid. Both of these are great at evening out skin tone, which is one of those components of glow. Someday I might do a proper video breaking down exactly what glowing skin actually is, but basically this serum ticks off a whole bunch of the boxes for it, even skin tone, smoother skin, and hydration. This is just a really lovely product that I use on my face when I want my skin to look smooth and even the next day without having to risk any irritation. And it is one of the few products that I can use for that when my skin is irritated without having to worry about making it worse. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like. Let me know if you tried any of these products before and what you thought. If you want more product reviews, you can check out this playlist where I've ranked Reddit's top Asian skincare products. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.